Right, welcome back to the channel. This week I played my first Jamiga Tour event of the year at Royal Ascot Golf Club. I'm going to be playing the rest of the season on the Jamiga Tour and I'm going to be filming all of the rounds. So all of these competitive rounds are going to be put up on YouTube with me commentating over, which I know is what people really subscribe to this channel for. This video is going to be the Pro-Am. I filmed most of the shots on the golf course, but I want to talk about just before some of the swing thoughts and thoughts I had going into this round and then after doing the commentary and showing you a lot of the golf course footage I'm going to talk about some of the swing stuff to end the video which is just another part of the learning process essentially. So as you know I've been seeing Steve for swing guidance or basically my swing coach. We've been working on a few things in the off season trying to get my swing in a better place. Now for the last couple of weeks before going into this round, before going into this tournament, I thought let's try and break away from being too technical in terms of literally no swing thoughts. And in practice, I've been playing well. I've been shooting in and around par, under par, and it's felt quite easy on the driving range. But getting in a competitive environment you don't actually know where your swing is until you get to that point. And what I mean is when the pressure's on, any tendencies that you have in the golf swing are gonna be exaggerated and they're gonna come out. And that's pretty much exactly what happened during this week. Luckily enough, I sorted these out after the pram round and rounds one and two are a lot better. But as I said, going into this round, I was trying to be freed up, playing completely natural with swing forts and yeah, this is what happened. We're gonna get straight into the tournament footage. Right, we're gonna start off, start off with some range footage. So, hitting it well on the range, surprisingly. Just um, clipping some out here with uh, four iron, two iron, and then we step up onto the first tee in a minute and hit one of the worst golf shots I've hit in an extremely long time. So the first hole we did, it was a shotgun start, so we're actually starting on 18, par five, it forces you to not hit driver and uh, that literally went like 50 yards right and like I said earlier <clears throat> there was no sign of that at all in the last couple of weeks on the driving range and on the golf course and then that led into on the first hole me just pulling this miles left on the par three just completely clouded with with stuff going on in my mind from then and then from from that point on, I actually played some okay stuff. Hit a good driveway here on the par five second hole. Had 150 yards into this, so I hit a big drive over the trees. Hit nine iron onto the green and uh, made a fairly routine birdie just to get things leveled, basically. Um, and then this is the par four third hole and this was big drive it's like a 370 yard par four and this was up by the green but on a mound and in some thick rough but got this on the green and gave myself a look so I studied the ship after that initial like what has just happened moment this is hole four and this is a 300 yards par four just hitting it up the right with six iron, left myself a wedge on, 60 degree wedge from around uh, around 100 yards. Just leaked this one out to the right a tiny bit. Um, but like I said, round one coming tomorrow is going to be every single shot. So I filmed most, I filmed all of these shots, but I've played probably, there's probably about 14 holes that I'm playing here. Um, just the relevant stuff from the day. But anyway, made par there, moved on to the par five afterwards and that was exactly the same swing as one again just huge stuck miss in a like horrific lie sat right down which is why they're saying good shot um move this one forward down the fairway That's a great shot. left myself well around 110 and uh this was almost very good this word shot just pitched over the mound and ripped back off that's quite a tough green to get at um, especially in two left that a bit short 
and then yeah move on this is the eight pole par three this is playing about 140 yards hit a decent wedge in here give myself a look for birdie it was like a three percent slope off the right um just mostly breaking at the end just hit it slightly through the break and this is hole nine so it's an interesting so this i've hit a two iron up the right it's kicked on the right hand side of the bunker into the bunker i've got 154 yards playing uphill so playing about 160 and i could only get a 50 degree wedge over the lip of this bunker as it's quite close to the edge i've hit this so hard and uh to be honest i was expecting this to get like front fringe but got it back there which was a, a surprise and uh hole nine <coughs> the green is uh slopes massively from back to front so some of these putts can be pretty tough this was swinging quite a bit off the right and they're like at a fast enough pace you know so probably running you know in and around like the nine to ten mark on the stimp so a bit quicker than what you're playing usually in your in your practice rounds and normal play um but not overly overly quick stay so uh four and off ten left myself about 125 so this is a 55 degree wedge down the wind little rip and knocked it to here left it a bit short Had this for par. Putting's actually feeling pretty good. Um, my putting's got, well, got out of whack just because I wasn't working on it much over the winter. And it's only recently I've been properly working on my game properly again. Um, so I went to see Ryan um, down at Bobby just for a little refresh because my putting stroke was in such a good place last year. And um, me and Ryan did some really good stuff with with, with my putting, so that is um, so we've got it in a decent place again. Obviously, I'm still seeing Steve for long game stuff, and we talk a bit about the game itself. Um, but it's great to see Ryan again, and hopefully get some course logs filmed with with both of them soon. Right, it's actually a 430 yard par four. Hit a big drive, had 90 yards in. Gave myself a look for birdie. Didn't. 15 tight par 5 again a lot of the par 5s here are strange because they sort of take driver out of your hand because where you would be hitting driver this actually went up near the hazard anyway where you would be hitting driver it something there's usually stuff in the way so it forces you into making it a three shot which was the first hole of the day that you saw um and a couple of the others as well for other reasons so it's one of those golf courses that it's not the longest but on the par fives, it sort of takes driver out of your hand a bit, which is always a bit frustrating. <coughs> Showing some top class touch there with that chip shot. And then this putt really like scares the hole. Oh. Gonna show you one more hole and then we'll get to the swing stuff, which I think is gonna be pretty interesting. But like I said, full round every single shot video coming hopefully tomorrow from round one. And uh, for the rest of the season, that's what we're, gonna, what we're gonna be doing. For practice days, let me know what you think in the comments below. Because on practice days, I can film some shots and just take you through the day and get that up very quickly. Um, would you like to see that? Would you want to see other stuff? Let me know. Uh, but yeah, this is a again, this is a tough par 416 long, uh, about 430 again. And that was driver flick with a 60 degree. I gave myself a look. And hit an okay part. Right, on to the swing stuff. It's not until, like I said earlier, you get into that press pressurized situation where any sort of swing floor will magnify and then you hit a shot and you'll be like, where the f does that come from? Like that wasn't in my practice, that wasn't in my practice rounds on the driving range. That didn't appear until you get the pressure on and then you don't really know where your swing is. Like I said earlier, you don't know where your swing is 
until the pressure's on, then it all comes out. What I did after the round is went down to Lavender Park, which is a driving range local, and uh, just filmed the first swing, which I'm gonna show you now. And look at the position at the top. So I'm gonna show you some photos and stills, uh, screenshots from this. So this is all, all the old tendencies. So club gets across the line. Then when the club's across the line, for me, what I do is it just goes straight down. So it drops behind me. Then I have to get my head coming back, I back up out of it, lose posture. And then it's very hard for me to time that, especially when the pressure's on. And then I have the tendency to miss massive rights when I'm really stuck. Now, the thing we were working on, me and Steve, um, over the last few months was feeling like I'm getting across the line. Because when I get the club across the line or feel like I'm getting across the line, in reality, it's pretty, it's pretty online. From that position, the club and hands stay in front of me and I don't have that stuck feeling. So you can see some of the screenshots here, how much better that position is than the previous one. And what I actually did is just drill this out, spent more time hitting balls, and then in rounds one and two, went in with exactly the same feeling. So my swing thoughts or swing feels were feeling like I'm just trying to get the club as across the line as possible. And I played a lot better. Like I swung it a lot better. When the pressure was on, I didn't hit these massive block rights. It's interesting because going into this round, I was like, yeah, let's just play, let's just play, see how it is. And then first tee of that prime day, I was just like, well, what the f where has that come from? And sometimes like people are like, right, you can't have swing force if you're trying to get in the zone or get into like optimum, optimal performance. But in reality, I remember Steve telling me that someone, I can't remember who it was, it was David Howe or someone along those lines, said they had literally like five swing forts the week they won. So it's not like you cannot get into like that performance zone with having swing forts cluttering up your mind because in reality they could just be making sure you get in the right positions big learning curve round one and two to follow round one is going to be every single shot which is hopefully going to be coming coming tomorrow i know you're going to enjoy it i play a lot better this is luckily enough that this is a prime round and this this wasn't round one of the tournament because i would have been pretty disheartened if i just turned up and shot that well it, it was about eight over if i shot that in round one but luckily enough got things sorted and round one's coming tomorrow so little teaser into the professional golf stuff again we are back lots of consistent uploads coming so subscribe and i'll see you soon